The smell of a freshly mowed lawn is as synonymous with summer as the smell of barbecue. Unfortunately, you can't get that perfectly lush lawn by simply planting some grass and hoping for the best. It just doesn't work. So Carson's back with tips for growing the best lawn in the neighborhood. You want everyone to be jealous. So Carson, you've got a checklist for us, right? Oh, you better believe it, and I am setting the record straight on a bunch of the items that people have a lot of mixed information about. But between you and me, Tracy, we're going to do it properly today, and I'm going to show everybody how to do it. Okay, perfect. We want the inside track. So let's start with raking the grass. Should we be raking the grass? Now, this is a very hot ticket item. A lot of people are concerned about insects living in the ground. But if you've got debris on the lawn like this, of course you need to rake it. The key, though, is what tool you use. Now, this is a giant fan rake, and this is a garden rake. The garden rake should go only in the garden, not in the lawn. <laughs> Don't use that for your grass. It's too strong. It will shred the soil. The fan rake, though, cleaning up like this is perfect. And you're not disturbing the insects under the soil because the insects are living four to seven inches deep underneath the roots of the grass. So when you do this, you're not disturbing the bugs at all. They're totally fine. What you are doing, though, by using the fan rake is you're loosening up all the debris and you're activating new growth for your grass. So especially if you have Kentucky bluegrass or some of the horizontal grasses that spread through the yard, this will get them going, start to self-repair all the holes that might be in your green sod. It's like a scalp massage, right? You just get in there and it helps it grow. Okay, let's there talk about go. fertilizing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, is there a right time to fertilize your lawn? Right. Yeah, now is the perfect time, but, and this is a huge but, there's two types of fertilizers on the market, and you need to be very careful about how you apply them. If you're using an organic fertilizer, you can just go ahead and spread it wherever you want. doesn't matter because it won't cause much damage to the lawn itself. Condos or small spaces that have little patches of grass, organic fertilizer, just spread it, no problem. As soon as you move to a chemical fertilizer, though, you absolutely have to have a spreader like this. And the reason why is I'm going to start working it here. The spreader does the appropriate distribution rate for the fertilizer. If you put too much on or too little on, especially the nitrogen, it will burn your grass. Ooh. So it's very important if you're using a chemical fertilizer to use a spreader with a proper dial to set the absolute perfect distribution rate so that your grass will stay healthy going into the rest of the season. Oh yeah, we do not want to burn the grass. That's the last thing we want. Okay, let's talk a little bit about rolling the grass, rolling the lawn. What is your opinion on that? What does that even mean? Yeah. Like, what am I saying? So when you roll the lawn, you have a big roller with weight. And a lot of people will use wheelbarrows full of soil, and they'll go over their lawn to actually take out the bumps. Do not roll your lawn until July or August in Canada. And the reason why is the grass is so wet, the soil is so wet, if you go over it with a heavy item, you're going to compact it. And if you compact your grass, you pack all that dirt in around the roots, it makes it harder for your grass to grow. So come the hot summer months, your grass hasn't developed enough roots, so now it starts going browner faster. So do not roll the lawn at this time of year at all. Okay, I know you had another tip that you wanted to throw in there uh, if we had time. What do you got for us? Real quick one, we are not putting down grass seed until nighttime temperatures are above 6 degrees. But the way to do it is I take a bag of soil. This is about 20 liters of soil. And I'm going to put about that much grass seed into it. That's about 3 pounds. And we're going to mix it together just like this. See how that all mixes together nice? And then you can take this and you can spread it on your lawn. You can put it in the patches. You can put it in anywhere you need it. What's great at this time of year, a lot less watering that you're going to have to do to have healthy green lawn. And the new grass seed will work its way down in amongst the older grass. Because the soil's already there, it will germinate faster and be healthier as a result. Carson, you don't need any lawn tools. You mix it with your hands. You throw the fertilizer with your hands. You just, you don't need anything. Okay, talk to me about any of the yellow, the yellow spots on the lawn that drive people bananas. 
What is there anything you can do about yeah. them? What might be causing them? Help us out. Yeah, so at this time of year, if you have a female dog or you're a female dog owner and they've urinated, you get those yellow spots. Or if you've had gr bad crabgrass or any insects that have gotten in there eating it, that's where you're going to patch those sections. So that's going to be a good hard rake. You're going to get in there with this good grass seed. You're going to fill it in all around that spot. You're going to water it well. You're going to wait two weeks and then you're going to fertilize that space as well. So so fertilizing can happen today, but after you put down new seed, you want to wait two more weeks after the new seed starts to germinate before you fertilize again. He's got all the answers, everyone. Carson, thank you so much for that.